evening and welcome to Information Please, your Peoria Public Library on the air, bringing you information about your library and your community. We're back for after a little hiatus and we have a brand new set, a brand new look to, for our brand new libraries. This evening my guest is Roberta Koschelski, the Associate Director of Peoria Public Library. Welcome, Roberta. Thank you, Tricia. Isn't it great to be back in this it, beautiful new it set? It is. This is we, wonderful. We can go from here to our beautiful new libraries that you can see on the monitor <laughs> behind us. Yeah. So anyway, it's been a long journey, and um, I'm so glad that you could take some time and help our viewers review the long path we followed and where we are now. It's so easy to just walk in and go, oh, this is beautiful, and not realize all the agonies and the struggles and the work that so many people have put in to make our Peoria Public Libraries as they are now state-of-the-art facilities that it's hard to match anywhere in the continental U.S. I think. Mm -hmm. So tell me again, when did this all start? Well, 2005, 2006, we did a lot of strategic planning with the help of consultants that we hired. Um, how can we improve the Peoria Public Library system and the services we offer? Um, in August of 2006 was when our current um, library director was hired, Ed Zanaka, and when the board selected him, they had in mind a, uh, you know, changes in the Peoria Public Library. Yes, because he had successfully opened, I don't know even how many libraries library during buildings his career. throughout his career, exactly. So um, it wasn't long after Ed started that the, Ed and the board decided to go for the referendum uh, during that winter, 2006-2007, and April 17th, 2007 was the big day when we passed by a vote of 72%, yes vote, the uh, referendum for $35 million for the uh, upgrade of the whole Peoria Public Library system. And we should remind people that that was only an advisory referendum. It wasn't a binding referendum. It was just the city council wanted to take the temperature of the city and do people here really want a library? And they did in fact show that with a 72% vote. Yes. And so the way that advisory referendum did work out is during the next summer, 2008, the city council did pass um, $28 million of that $35 million, um, kind of cutting out the Lakeview branch piece, knowing that we would be building a new north branch, and the city council wasn't quite sure how that would affect business at Lakeview branch. Right. So the building committee of the library board got to work and uh, began meeting every Thursday evening for years and years. Yeah, <laughs> to, it is. Uh, I, ha I have my special ribbon that said I had attended 100 building committee meetings, and that was from a few was, years ago. Yeah, that was part way through. Yeah. And, uh, and so that committee was in charge of making so many of the decisions, um, including where to put the North Branch, or including what color that wall is. Yeah. Uh, from, from big exactly. to small decisions, different committees and, and parts of that building committee, subcommittees. Um, so the, the fun began with that. The referendum funded five building projects, the, uh, the creation of the new North Branch. And, and you think about when this project began. When I started with the library in 1984, right from the beginning, new people to Peoria would call the library, call Lakeview Branch and ask, I'm new in town, this is my address, where is my closest location? And they were already calling from way north of Lakeview. It's been needed for about 40 years. I know when mm -hmm. they opened Lakeview Branch in 1971 or 72, at that moment, in those minutes, it says, now we need to plan for the next branch. So it was a long time coming. It was just mm -hmm. difficult to find a spot, but I think we did a good job. It's in the center of the northern part of Peoria and easy to get to and in a retail area that a lot of people go to anyway. Mm -hmm. You can see it easily from Route yeah. 6 and you know who doesn't shop at the places right near there. So. Yeah, and of course everybody wants their branch library in their neighborhood, but we can't do that, unfortunately, so. Mm -hmm. And then, so that was a big piece of the, uh, the referendum. A huge piece. Also, uh, the renovation of the main library mm -hmm. for people who had been to the main library since you know, 70s, 60s. Um, the departmentalization, the business science and technology department, the art and music department, the reference department, the children's department. Each had its own group of staff members who specialized in those areas. 
which uh, had its good and bad points. Mm -hmm. And now to have that library not only physically renovated, but changing the way the staff serves the public, um, we get compliments every day on, uh, on the main library yes. building. And I think people, when we talk about the long range plan, people don't understand that it wasn't just about the buildings, but the buildings had to be the first step because we could not make the service changes without the new buildings because of the fact, as you said, like the second floor of the main library was three separate rooms with three separate areas and you can't give the new state-of-the-art service under those circumstances. Exactly, and we, you know, we moved toward that. Um, people may recall on the second floor of the main library there was a point when the walls got torn down, the glass walls got torn down, and then um, we moved a service desk in between the old business science and technology, art and music, and uh, children's. Mm -hmm. But then we still had reference on the first floor, so people right. were always we, confused about, yeah. do I ask my question here, do I ask it on the second floor? Well, and where's my book, which, which part is it? We had mm -hmm. print lists all the time, and there would just be divisions within the number, within the Dewey Decimal System numbers. So that was pretty crazy, but mm -hmm. we're past that finally. <laughs> yes. So uh, also, uh, you know, these building projects were kind of starting at different times with the groundbreakings, but then running concurrently. Uh, we began Lincoln Branch uh, on Lincoln Avenue in Peoria. And what a great effort that has turned out to be. That Carnegie building was added onto in back, mm -hmm. um, a, a large addition. Um, 12,000 square feet. Yeah, yeah. 12,000 square feet, which is about the size of Lakeview Branch, to yes. give people an idea of how big that just that additional piece is, done by the architect so that when you look at Lincoln Branch still from Lincoln Avenue, you still just see the Carnegie Building. And then when you go down the side streets, you can see the, the, see the addition building. in the back. And of course, that is now a landmarked historic site, as mm -hmm. is the park. And of course, um, we don't like to bring it up so much, but we do need to acknowledge that that park was Peoria's original cemetery. And while we had been told that the cemetery was moved, we ended up doing an archeology span project following state law, the Illinois State Human Skeletal Remains Act, and had uh, professional archeologists take care of any burials that were on that site so that we could go ahead with our addition. The whole place is landmarked, and it is an absolute gem. People will tell you that over and over, that this Carnegie Library is one of the few that was still used as a library, and we have preserved it perfectly. And so many thanks go to so many people for that. But we did it. And just talking about equalizing the service, it has just been a fantastic addition, and the library service we're able to bring now is incredible. Mm -hmm. And you people would recall that when they'd enter the Lincoln Branch Library before, mm -hmm. <clears throat> through the front of the Carnegie, you'd go up several stairs mm -hmm. to get to the, the main floor. And so building the addition onto the back at ground level meant you, know, you dealt with two separate levels. And so as you go in through the new addition, when you go into that ground level area, you turn around and see the grand staircase that it leads is. back up through to a walkway across with windows, and then you can enter the Carnegie Building with the, uh, the fireplace that yeah. we don't have lit, but uh, yeah. it's a very cozy room where yeah. adult the fi fiction is. The fireplace is, is, is a little bit of a hazard to the building, mm -hmm. so we restored it so it looked ni looks nice, but it, it but won't be used we don't at this use point. It. And uh, a nice meeting room where the, where the restrooms used to be, and it's just, you know, it was a, an amazing transformation. And it's a, a very cozy area where the Carnegie was, and a very busy area where the new addition is with the children's themed story time room, hot air balloon theme, and computer lab, and uh, all the public computers, and, and good staff areas, self-checks, information desk. But I'm getting to the services, and to get <laughs> back wanna, to the buildings. Yeah, we want to get back to <laughs> the, the uh, buildings first. We, uh, then began work on McClure branch, and McClure is the smallest branch, and a very well-loved branch. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, McClure, and in the original plan from our consultants, McClure would have been closed because we couldn't expand it. We can't provide the same services there that we can everywhere else because it's a 100-year floodplain, mm -hmm. but the citizens spoke loud and clear, and so McClure and has so restored. McClure restored and looks beautiful uh, inside, it's a little, you know, they have beautiful windows. You can see that from just driving by the building. 
and uh, then under several of those windows, there's little window seats that you can sit and read at. And they uh, took the radiators out and mm -hmm. put in window seats in every window. Mm -hmm. Great views of the trees outside. Um, restored meeting room in the lower level, so that can be used for tutoring, small groups, book clubs, whatever. And uh, very nice colors, redid all the shelving. Uh, did not use as much shelving so that it's a more open feel. There's public computers, self-checks, just like all of the other locations. Exactly, exactly. And last but not least, Lakeview Branch. Um, even though $7 million was cut from the referendum, um, through creative money spending, wise money spending, um, there were still funds that were set aside then mm -hmm. to do not an expansion of Lakeview, not as much renovation that had been planned, but at least an interior redo. Well, as our and construction people said, rouge and lipstick. There you go. <laughs> Including, for longtime Lakeview users, uh, the much needed renovations to the restrooms. Mm -hmm. Can't go into the new Lakeview branch without going into a uh, your favorite like a restroom. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, changing the front circulation desk to now be the yes. self-check desk area. Adding an information desk in the middle uh, on the adult side and uh, making a change to the meeting rooms. There used mm -hmm. to be two meeting rooms, one on each side of the building, and now there are a couple of study rooms, especially designed for smaller groups, and then a dedicated children's story time room and the meeting room that was always there, kind of next to the restrooms. Right, right, yeah. So, uh, and I know this, the dedicated story time room is a huge change because with the children's area just open and right there, and the fact that we had the automatic doors and the door to the story time room would be open. We know that small children, and we all, any mother can tell you, a two-year-old can be faster than grease lightning mm -hmm. and can, would, could get out of that story time, run, hit that automatic door, and be in the parking lot in the blink of an eye. Yeah. No more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that era has ended, and I think a lot of parents probably breathe this sigh of relief. It, is, it was very difficult to hang on to a toddler. Plus, a lot of people just didn't like the hissing doors that were opening and closing. And mm -hmm. the fact that we had a book drop that dropped right into the the room almost, and you would be doing a program or a story time, and you'd hear clunk, clunk, clunk. bang, clunk, clunk, bang. Uh -huh. And that's, that's over and done with. Which also meant, on the other side of the things, as a staff member, mm -hmm. If there was a program going on, you couldn't go in and, <laughs> and empty excuse me, everyone, I'm going in to empty book the cart. book drops. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, so now there were some floor plan changes, and it's working out very well. Yeah, it looks great. So that's, that's our five buildings, and mm -hmm. those are the things. What are the things each of them have in common now? Because we went much more with this being a system just because of the way we deliver materials and our catalog. And so maybe you should start with explaining, because the catalog, which is a service feature, was one of the first things that happened. People may not realize what a traumatic event that was for, for all of us who worked on it. So would you explain well, that? Well, Peoria Public Library is part of the Resource Sharing Alliance. Mm -hmm. And right about the time we uh, went for the referendum, uh, we're talking about planning these building projects, RSA migrated to a new uh, catalog system. And so uh, we had to do a lot of training of our staff to uh, work with this new system. So, you know, because everything was different, how you search for a book, how you check out a book, um, all the functions were different. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we migrated to that. And so what can people do? They can, from any device, whether it's your smartphone or your computer or your tablet, search for materials at the Peoria Public Library website. Click on catalog and you're there. You can search for materials, put reserves on any material you want. Uh, you can sign up to get text message notifications when That's you're my favorite. Trisha's favorite when you uh, you know you've <laughs> you've asked for a book or a DVD or a CD book to uh, to be made available for you. You'll get a text message. So wherever you are, then you get that text message and you can stop at the library where you requested that it be sent to. Um, but you can also. Renew your materials with your you cell phone also, texting, and with your you know it's not only text that we let you know that your reserved right, material has come right. in. You can opt for emails or phone calls, yeah. or the old. You fashioned. can get that information any way you want. Yes, yes, and uh, so then you were saying what else we can do online? Well, you can check yeah. your account. What what do you have checked out? We also can send you texts that 
within a couple of days these items are coming due mm -hmm. so you can avoid fines. We've uh, instituted unlimited renewals. We have a loan period on everything of two weeks, but you can just you can keep renewing items if you want to keep it a little longer. If it takes you don't a while have to, to get through that, that book, that DVDs are only a week and books are three weeks. Two, three and weeks. Everything's yeah. two weeks, no matter what you check out, mm -hmm. and you can keep it as long as no one else wants it. Exactly. And um, you don't need to pay fines if you use all these things where you can just. I mean, my okay. phone will beep and say a book's due. I could be anywhere in the grocery store, at, you know, mm -hmm. laying in bed at 10 o'clock at night, and I can renew my books on my phone right then. And it's simple text messaging. It's not an app like for a smartphone. Mm -hmm. So almost anybody with a cell phone can can manage right, that for free. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. for free, and, absolutely. And, you, and I I think visually the improvement in. The catalog is what's so wonderful because there's a picture of a book, and just like if you go to any of the big book mm -hmm. buying websites, or I should say book selling websites, you can look inside, you can read all kinds of information, um, you can do what's called a discovery search, where it makes it as if you're in the library. You know how often you go to look for a book, and the one you found isn't exactly it, but you see the book, a much better book, right next mm -hmm. to it on the shelf. And that's what Discovery Search lets you do. It lets you it lets you see things nearby on the shelf. So it's it's almost like you're virtually in the library. You can have that same experience as you so, search for the things you want. Uh -huh. Instead of impulse buying, then you're impulse placing holds on other yeah, items yeah. that you want. Yes. And uh, also with the the online catalog, you can uh, tell the catalog. You can put in some of your interests. So I have gardening, shade gardening. Um, different interests that I've put in related to mm -hmm. gardening, landscaping. And so I think it happens on Sunday afternoons when all new items are loaded into the database. You'll get texts a that, whole bunch uh, of that text a new that a text or an email that a new uh, item yeah. fitting your specifications has been added to the catalog. But it's and just like you know going to the new bookshelf. You get to see everything that's there. And that's mm -hmm. actually in the catalog too. You can click on a link that says you know new books new new music new movies and so you don't have to be there you don't have to try and find them in the catalog the list will pop up for you mm -hmm. and you and you can see them and so once we have that and people are sending things all over and putting things on hold what happens at the buildings with the yeah. actual physical item you asked what else is in common well you get this text message and you get it uh, right before it's time to go to lunch so you drive over to the library where you said you wanted to pick up this item you go to the shelves where the held items are the reserved items you see your item you pick it up off the shelf you go over to the self checks you uh, scan your card bring up your record oh I forgot I owed 50 cents on something you put in your cash, your credit, or your debit card, pay that fine, check out your item, you're done. You don't have to talk to anyone in the building if you don't want to. Right. If you have problems, there is a staff member on hand mm -hmm. watching over all the self-checks so that they can help you. Right. So if you, you know, it takes all that waiting out. You don't have to wait and ask someone for your hold. You don't have to wait to pay somebody a fine. You don't have to wait in a line to get checked out because you can just zip through check out like 15 items piled up at once but if you're stuck or if you just don't like this whole thing then there is a person there to help you mm -hmm. and, and and being my smartphone lover you can actually put your library card in your smartphone and our readers will pick that up and scan mm -hmm. it so and you I no longer carry my library card uh -huh. you mentioned 15 items piled up yes in the old days not too many years ago for each item, that item would have to be individually scanned for you to check it out. And then we'd even stamp them, each one with the dates due. Now, you put that pile of items on the, the, computer, on the pad next mm -hmm. to the, uh, the scanning area, and the computer quickly reads those 15 items. They come up on the screen, they turn green, and <laughs> you click on continue. It's a touch screen. You hit continue, and it'll ask you if you want a receipt. You get a paper receipt, just like the grocery store, mm -hmm. with all your items listed, and that's what you use yeah, as your so bookmark. And, yeah. uh, or put it on the refrigerator or yeah. whatever, or keep however it, you... Yeah, keep it in your book. So if you mm -hmm. don't want to go on the website and look and see when things are due, if you don't mm -hmm. like the paper clutter, you don't have to take that if you you know if you like that piece of paper there it is and all the dates are the same they're all due in two weeks yeah and parents like that if they have you know several small children that are each have their card and check out things it's a great way to teach children to take care of things and how to use the library because they can have their little list of what was checked out in your card 
And as, as a parent, I would have found that absolutely wonderful mm -hmm. to know whose book was who. <laughs> Another thing in common at all the libraries is since we're not using as many people, as many staff members at circulation desks, we've implemented roving reference. And this means that the reference librarians aren't just sitting behind the reference desks waiting for someone to ask them a question. They are out on the floor. Sometimes they have a clipboard with them um, and they're meeting and greeting customers and asking them, is there anything I can help you find today? So you don't have to go up to the scary reference librarian and feel like you're interrupting them. You have someone saying, hi, welcome to the library. Let me know if there's anything I can help you with. Plus, you don't have to wait while they take a phone call because every place has a call center behind mm -hmm. the scenes and they're answering the phone behind the scenes. It's very quiet. Yes. No ringing phones, no people saying hello. Well, unless they're on their cell phone and being a and, little And you're not listening loud. then to a librarian answer a question. Yeah you know, which should be a more personal yeah, a more yeah. personal thing. So those questions are being answered back in workrooms and uh, it's a much quieter atmosphere just like libraries are supposed to be. Well we've <laughs> talked pretty much about everybody has at the same time. We should talk about um, the special features at each place and I, I don't know whether to put ours under special features or across the board. I think maybe across the board we should wrap up with that because we have Mm -hmm. managed our hours so that people can go to the library when it's convenient for them. Can you give us a little rundown of, of our exciting weekend plan? Sure. With a, you know, the library board thought building all of these buildings, they want them to be used when people want to use the library. And so our three largest branches, those are North and Lakeview and Lincoln, <laughs> are uh, open evenings and Sundays, Sundays noon to five year round. Mm -hmm. It used to be just Lakeview Branch, now it's Lakeview North and Lincoln. And so they were notice, closed in the summer. You know, in the summer the, there was the, no the northernmost branch, the center of the city branch, and the southernmost branch are open evenings and Sundays. Um, all five locations, including then McClure and the main library, are open Saturdays year round as well. So right. that gives us a lot more hours during the summer, more hours when people use the libraries. Now, the footnote to that is to be open Sundays year-round. We did o close each of those three large branches one day during the week. So you'll notice that North Branch is closed on Tuesdays, um, Wednesdays Lincoln Branch is closed, and Thursdays Lakeview Branch is closed. But people are more interested in the Sunday hours, so we've, the weekday you know, hours. So we've done that. And that's confusing and hard to remember if you go to our website and the top um, left there's a big button that says hours. If you click on that there's even a little chart yes. that has an X when people are closed and what hours they're open. Mm -hmm. So we should real quickly, because we're going to run out of time here, mm -hmm. go through what are the fantastic special features at each place. Like North Branch has a fireplace and... a Well the story time room has a beehive theme and right next to the story time room is a real observation beehive with live bees. Yes. This doesn't mean you should be scared to go on the branch. This is all behind glass and plexiglass and wood and it's a, it's an, a, a, we work with the local beekeepers mm -hmm. and uh, there's a place where the bees can go in and out outside yeah, and there's the a window. Building. You can look and watch them going in and out in of that and, and it's pollinating the prairie that was planted and I'm sure they're using the fountain. <laughs> and you know they're making honey. They're building the hives, and there's all sorts of activity. It's like a beehive, you know. It's yeah, a it's, beehive of activity. Great. And and at Lincoln we have what's the story time room there? That's the hot air balloon, and that's got wonderful graphics on the walls, and uh, and it's it's made the floor and about three feet up the wall is made like you're in the basket of an air balloon, mm -hmm. and there are you know flags on the ceiling to simulate the and a, inside and a light of the that balloon. looks like the fire. Yeah, so yeah. you're inside the air balloon for story times and programs at yeah. Lincoln Branch. And they also, of course, have the computer lab, yes. which Maine and Lincoln have those computer labs. And speaking mm -hmm. of Maine, we of course we have four floors, so we can offer more. What are our special things there? Well, maybe I'll start from uh, the lowest level, lower level two, is uh, we have a state-of-the-art auditorium, carpeted now, with uh, you know a wonderful sound and projection system. You can tie into your laptop for you know presentations and uh, um, 
It's, it's it, it'll hold up to 350 people okay. if they're just in chairs. Mm -hmm. And also on that floor, we have another computer lab with 24 stations. Mm -hmm. We've uh, got another conference room. We've got the Friendly Finds book sale room yes. and gift shop, and uh, with uh, thousands of books that yes, are every book for you sale. can get to every used book now. Yes, and uh, they are looking for more volunteers all the time, so that can be open more. Mm -hmm. But then on the next level, up, a level we have we've got local history and genealogy. All of the materials in one area now staffed all the hours that the library, the main library is open. We've got the gallery, which is one of Trisha's favorite places with <laughs> rotating art exhibits. Yeah, every month or two there's a new exhibit and we've had fabulous things. Mm -hmm. And two more meeting rooms on mm -hmm. that floor. Um, going up to the main floor then, that's a circulation, information desk, children's area. Um, the lounge that used was where the entrance to the building used to be, where you can bring in your lunch. It's you know the whole building is Wi-Fi, so you can bring in your laptop, or whatever. Uh, second floor is all reference services, and, and a and few more meeting rooms. But yes, you know what? We're out of time. People Already. have to. I know <laughs> there's too much to talk about. People are just going to have to come in and see for themselves. I think, and. So I hope if you haven't been to see our new libraries, there are spectacular people who come in say there's nothing like this in Peoria. People have constantly told me there's nothing like this other library anywhere in the country. So we've gone out and gotten the, the latest and the greatest and you should be enjoying it. It's easy to get a library card. We'll see you soon at Peoria Public Library. Mm -hmm.